What's up, guys? Good morning or good afternoon. Uh, I'm so used to uh, streaming in the morning that it looks like we do have the Roku numbers that are out. Let's see what they actually are. Look at the uh, music going. Let me know if you can hear the music as well, guys. Do me a favor. Let me know if you can hear the music. Let's see what these numbers were for Roku. Roku's down to 134 right now. Yeah, if you have any other major earnings that you want us to uh, go over today on the show, let me know. All right, so for Roku, just getting ready to drop these results here. Roku, uh, Roku saw fiscal year 2021 sales. Of 2.765 billion, according to Reuters, uh, active accounts were 60.1 million. Uh, let's put these numbers a little bit bigger so you can see them. Um, so far for Roku, we're gonna get the call ready. The calls we're gonna be having the call on live as well. Um, You can see Roku dropping. Music is, mu uh, music is good. Can anyone hear him speaking? Are you in on this? Uh, yeah, I think I have Roku. I, we'll see. You missed some of the craziness today. What happened? Check out the stocks from this afternoon. Um, looks like the spy crashed today, huh? BKKT tanked. Spy dumped pretty hard today. Um, what other stocks moved? Let me check my scanners from Benzinga. ISPO went up 500%. Wow. Crazy. CPTN. Crazy. Wow. That's nuts, man. These went nuts, man. Crazy. Um, yeah, it all happened later. Which is weird, man. So were these high short float plays or were these being manipulated is the question. Um, let me look up the numbers for ANGH, but that's crazy. Uh, but we are reporting the Roku numbers. We'll definitely be watching those tomorrow morning. Um, for sure, for sure. ANGH as well. I don't know. It depends on what the numbers are. If the numbers are good and it gets beat up, I might buy, I might buy the dip, TS. Uh, if the, if uh, Like I said, but it, it depends. Um, if and Carol's going to be here in just a second, I think. Uh, let me get the conference call ready. Uh, I'm trying to get the conference call up. Um... So it looks like the Roku call is going to be at 4 Central, 5 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Yeah, KT7. It, it looks crazy, brother. Um, so A and GH. What were the short squeeze plays for today? I'm going to look at them on the other screen. So we're waiting. Man, A and GH flew. Crazy, crazy. Wow. Um, hmm. What was the cause of it is the question.
All right, so it's a SPAC merger for ISPO. That's what this is. Interesting. Yeah, ISPO started off. These, these were feeder stocks. Yeah, it seems. So. And VCT was up at one point. So it seems like it was a crazy day specifically for penny stock squeezes, right? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it seems like it was a crazy day. ISPO, A and GH. We're going to watch those tomorrow. All right, guys, Carol's going to be here in two minutes. Uh, bought the dipple multiple stocks and they just kept dipping. CPT9 went on its own. Um, yeah, I'm looking at a lot of these. Uh, those are crazy, though. I I'd be very careful, though, with a lot of these. Um, I I I SPAC mergers can be a powerful thing, but very rarely do stocks like this hold their gains. Um, they might hold some of them, but they're probably not going to hold all of them. The big thing to see is if we get a... a a huge squeeze where is a and gh from what where, where is the stock from um what's the market cap 744 million All right, so what do y'all think of A&GH? Uh, let me know in chat. Bullish or bearish? Are you bullish or bearish for Roku stock regarding after-hour earnings? We're asking this question in the chat. Bull or bear, let me know. Vote in the poll. Yeah, after hours the action is ridiculous. Um, yeah, we're seeing some craziness right now, man. We see uh, Roku starting to push back up. We're waiting for the numbers to come out here. Again, Roku saw active accounts at 60.1 million, according to Reuters. Or Reuters. Yeah, A and G H went crazy along with I S P O. Yeah, and A and G H is still going here. Look at A and G H right now. So A and G H is still going, which is interesting. It, it's we'll see. Um, I'm looking up the short float now. So if this is a short squeeze or if this is just a run, um, that's what I'm looking up now. Man, look at A and G H pop. Okay, so A and G H has no short float. So be careful. I'm not saying it is a pump. But it has no short float, so it's not a squeeze. Um, is this the one that was a SPAC merger? That could explain it. SPACs uh, are generally very, very powerful, especially lately. So it could be that. Yeah, look at ANGH rip. It's probably following ISPO here. Hmm. Interesting. So we'll see. But here's Roku. Roku is actually teetering up there to try to test for green today. Uh, last 15 minutes were about break even. Slowly edging up. The SPY itself right now had a pretty nasty day uh, throughout the market. So rough day for the SPY. Bro, I got the sun in my eye. Low float, no shorts. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at the float. The ANGH float is like 20 million. The ISPO float 
is 17 million but it's unavailable which means it's obscure like that means that these are obscure they're unavailable on a lot of platforms which means that ispo a and gh are obscure y'all just be careful man um they might have some great gains you might be able to make some money there's certainly a lot of momentum Yeah, I'm watching ISPO and ANGH rip. Uh, this is going to be the earnings vice. Uh, it's going to be the earnings call live. So it's going to be the complete earnings call live. And then we're also going to react to it on the charts. And we're going to, you know, review the actual numbers once they drop as well. So we're all just waiting for that right now. Man, dude, this freaking, this spot sucks on my office, bro. Like, look at me. I feel like Edward from from twilight like i can't see anything this sucks i gotta move this man i gotta do something um. That should work, kind of, hopefully. Oh yeah, that's much better. All right, a little bit better, I can scoot over. I'll be right back, guys. So Roku just tanked. Uh, I'm trying to wait for the numbers to come out, but Roku's falling. It's at 130s right now. Yeah, Roku down to 133.65s right now. So Roku's falling. Yeah, it's rough. Vote on the poll right now. Let me know if you're bullish or bearish in Roku, but it's dropping right now. And something I want you guys to pay attention to from here on out regarding ANGH, regarding ISPO. Like, listen, I trade penny stocks, but I also have I also understand that if you trade large caps, it's generally going to be an easier bet. Um, most traders, once they make enough money, gravitate away from penny stocks. There's not a lot of hedge funds that focus on penny stocks. And so understand that when we get moves like this, like look at this move. It's from $10 all the way up to 30 today. So these are huge moves. But understand that when we get moves like this, this is going to create two different things. Okay, it's going to create large swings of, a, uh, of accounts in the market. So like some people are going to make a lot of money on stocks like this. Other people are going to lose a lot of, uh, you know, lots of money. The other thing it's going to do is that once this comes back down, this is going to create very large bag holders generally. The, generally, when whenever we get run-ups like this in the market we're gonna have bag holders what's called bag holders in stocks which is when uh stocks pump up uh and then traders instead of cutting losses when they correct and drop back down they just hold on to them and sometimes they never come back and so a lot of the times large communities of traders are built on bag holding stocks like stocks that have gone up substantially and then pull back down and traders just kind of sit there hoping that they'll one day come back that's very common and that's generally created when we, whenever we have big squeeze moves like i and or like a and gh like ispo and i'm not saying you can't make money with these just be very careful like this i've, I've seen the cycles of the stock market and, and this is what generally happens and so y'all just be careful Yeah, well, I mean, Amazon and Tesla, I think, are more established companies. And so bag holding Amazon or bag holding Tesla is vastly different than bag holding ANGH or ISPO. Like, there's just a lot of differences there. Because, again, ANGH and ISPO 
are obscure stocks. These are not well-known companies. We, we don't really have any way to truly vet these companies because we don't know them, to be honest. We don't know these companies. They're not famous companies that we can watch the progress of. Um, they're companies that are obscure that nobody really knows about. And so bag holding these companies comes with far, far more risk than bag holding Tesla or bag holding Amazon because it's pretty safe to assume that Amazon will eventually, you know, as time goes on, keep going up. Okay, so we do have the Roku numbers here. We do have the Roku numbers. I'm going to drop these in chat right now. So we do have the Roku numbers. Um, we have fourth quarter e uh, EBI TDA at 86.7 million, down 24% year over year. Sales of 865.3 million, missed the 894.01 million estimate. So worse than expected results, uh, worse than expected numbers. Um, so yeah, worse than expected numbers. Uh, we're, we're looking at more details. We're going to drop the second burst of this as well. They saw uh, first quarter sales and we're going to keep adding to this scroller on the bottom. We're also going to be hosting the conference call for Roku. If you want to see if that's going to help the stock or not. Um, and we'll see. All right. All right, so Roku first quarter. All right, so here is the full scroller at the bottom is going to be the full list of earnings. Do you want to read these? Yeah. All right. I'll start probably here and then just read up okay. the whole thing. So do you click... No, you don't click it. You just read it. So Roku, Roku fourth quarter adjust. This is adjust. Speaking to the mic. Yeah, where are you going? This is adjust. Yeah, I'll do it. You don't need to touch the mic, really. You just read this. Just All read right. This. So it's what is this though? E B I T D A. Okay. Uh, it, they pronounce it IBITA. Okay. But, so what is? So what does that mean exactly? Um. I don't want to clog up the the news. Yes. Yeah. Show me what it is. Okay. Earnings for interest, taxes, and depreciation. And so... I look right here. A it's more, basically a gross more, earnings. Um, so it's it's earnings before net income, interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Okay. Amortization. Um, and so it's basically earnings, the uh, gross earnings. Okay. Not gross earnings, but I'm going to call it gross earnings just because it means it's it's earnings without the... Like, it's not net, basically. All right, but all right, so okay, so it's 8.6, or I'm sorry, 86.7 million is the Roku fourth quarter adjusted EPI, EBI TDA, yeah, and it's down 24% year over year sales. sales year are, over year, yeah, sales are eight. All right, baby, <laughs> <laughs> you can do this. Baby. I know, you can do this, baby. I know Just how read to it. read, I promise. Okay. All right. It's eight million sixty-five eight hundred eight hundred and sixty-five point three million. Oh my God. It's uh missed the eight hundred and ninety-four point oh one million estimate. Roku saw fourth quarter adjusted EPI D T D A of eighty-six point seven million. It was down twenty-four percent year over year. It saw sales of eight hundred and sixty-five point three million, missed the eight hundred and ninety-four point oh one million estimate. There you go. See, I can't do that. Okay. Do Ro like Roku fourth quarter active accounts came in at 60.1 million, up 17% year over year. Uh, they saw streaming numbers come in for streaming hours at 19.5 billion streaming hours. So that's up 15% year over year. They saw first quarter net gross profit okay. come in at 360 million. Adjusted EBI TDA is 55 million. Uh, they saw fiscal year 22 total net sales growth of 35% year over year. And they did drop their EPS, which is earnings per share. It's a gauge on how profitable the company actually is. And so we saw Roku fourth quarter EPS of 17 cents beat the seven cent estimate. Uh, so those are the numbers right now for uh, <laughs> for Roku fourth quarter earnings. Um, those are the numbers. And they're not bad. Uh, yeah, they missed a lot of areas. Um, Carol's learning to report it, so it's well, all good. Well, yeah, and I know how to read, I promise. Every no, she knows how to read. She just it. she gets stage fright is all this is. Yeah, well, this is stage fright. It's a mix of that and like every now and then 
and I know I'm not the only one this happens to, where you look at a number where it's like, it's like some number in the thousands or the hundreds of thousands or, or the hundreds of millions, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, looking at big and numbers. And you look at them and you're like, it takes... You know, usually it's just, it's fine. I can read it with no issue. Yeah. Anyways. It's all good. Yeah, I had a moment. Yeah. Struggling over there, huh? like I have more and more of those these days. Yeah. All right, but we do have the numbers. You can just read the scroller on the bottom of the screen. Uh, yeah, Roku's not really reacting positively to this. Uh, not really the most positive numbers. Uh, again, they saw fourth quarter EPS of 17 cents profit beat the seven cent profit estimate. So actually better profitability than they expected. Again, fourth quarter EPS, which is earnings per share. It's a gauge on how profitable the company actually is. Came in at 17 cent per share profit, which beat the seven cent per share profit estimate. So they did have better than expected EPS, which is profitability. So they were more profitable uh, by about 10 cents per share than they originally expected. They also saw fiscal year 22 total net sales growth of 35% year over year. Uh, first quarter gross profit came in at 360 million, adjusted EPI TDA of 55 million. They saw first quarter net sales of 720 million versus 748.5 million estimates. So there was a miss there uh, again first quarter net sales they thought uh, they thought it would be 720 million it was better than the 748.5 million estimate uh fourth quarter active accounts came in at 60.1 million again up 17 percent year over year uh streaming hours saw 19.5 billion hours streamed and that's up 15 percent year over year as well uh gaap eps came in at 17 cents per share beat the 13 cent per share uh, estimate so more profitable by about five cents uh, uh four cents uh revenue of 865.3 million missed by about 28.7 million and this is mostly from benzinga so shout out to benzinga uh i can drop the link if anybody wants to sign up for benzinga this is where i'm um getting this really quick news you all right over there yeah. all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, how do you think the markets will react tomorrow? Vote on the poll right now, too. Uh, Bill Lush or Bearish on Roku? Oh, everybody's saying Bear. Um, I, I mean, they were mixed, okay? So they were mixed. Better EPS. So just, just to show you what these results actually mean, higher than expected EPS on both fronts. And so they were more profitable than they originally... Uh, than analysts originally expected. So Roku was more profitable than they expected. But they did see lower sales numbers. So their uh, net sales came in lower than expected. Um, and aside from that, they, you know, they did okay. You know, e adjusted EBI TDA of 86.7 million down 24% year over year. So that's where they uh, missed uh, an EBI TDA revenue uh, sales of 865 million, which meets, missed the 894 million estimate. So sales were worse revenue was down but they were ultimately more profitable with uh the transactions they had than they expected so overall that is basically what that the roku earnings release story is is they were more profitable than originally expected but they had lower sales and revenue numbers fiscal year 21 yeah, and Carol's learning. Now Carol's learning. She does. It's very. Uh, if it was me and I had never looked at this stuff, I probably wouldn't know. It take. The only reason I know how to do this as well as I do is because I've done this for years now. And so you read these things, you kind of get the hang of it after oh, yeah, after a while. It's, it's a it just of, takes time. Yeah, it's a bunch of like abbreviated or like FY twenty one. Yeah, you fiscal year like 2021, I mean, EBI TDA, uh, which I always have to look up the what uh, earnings before interest, taxes, and depreciation is EBI yeah, TDA. Yeah, everything is uh, like abbreviated and hyphenated. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's yeah, it's all good though. Um, but yeah, again, fourth quarter EPS 17 cents, uh, beat the seven cent estimate. Gross profit 360 mil, net sales growth 35 percent year over year for the fiscal year 22. Total net sales growth, uh, EPS is up, but they did have lower sales numbers and they missed uh, in terms of their estimates. So, you know, sales grew year over year, but were lower than estimates, basically. And the uh, the revenue was down as well. But their earnings per share, which is, again, a gauge on how profitable the company is, is up. So more profitable than they originally expected or than analysts expected, I should say. But sales and, and revenue was down. But up year over year, but lower than expected. Still up year over year, though. Um, so that's the story.
Hey, thank you, Francisco. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you, man. Um, yeah, he said, congrats. You have a beautiful wife with all my respect. Thank you. Oh, I thank you. That's the right way to give a compliment, bro. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's the right way to do it. Thank you very much. That's yeah. very sweet. Yeah. Um, but Roku up there to 12930s. 12930s. Yeah, it's, it rained a little bit over here. What's the weather like where you're from, guys? Uh, what other earnings do we have today in after hours? I know it's Thursday. It's a little bit less exciting of an after hour session. Yesterday, we had some craziness. Uh, today, we had craziness, to be honest here. Cold, nasty, rain freezing now, snowing in Chicago. I woke up cold this morning. He's been sitting inside smoking and trading today. I mean, that sounds like a good day, bro. Uh, especially with today. It's kind of crazy, you know? Had some crazy short squeezes today. If they take down NVIDIA. Yeah, I mean, NVIDIA, man. Um, that NVIDIA stream was crazy. We just had so many people. NVIDIA is just such a huge company. Uh, it's not just a huge company, but it's related to all facets of trading. Like, like video cards. Um, crypto is mined through like uh, video cards uh video. And, and and micro chip and uh, all that stuff so crypto's mine through it gamers play on it traders need good ones for their computer it's all based around tech and trading and so a lot of people show up for the nvidia conference call um we do disney it was about the same you know Take your time. It's like learning any special language for games, hobbies, and slang and religion in regions. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, look what I had to do up there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. Y'all are all really nice. Everyone's telling me, hey, look, we do this all the time. You're yeah. Learning. So I, I appreciate the patience. Yeah, for sure. Waiting for the uh, the conference call. It starts pretty soon. Um, let me sign up for the uh, Roku conference call or Roku earnings call. Any other earnings I dropped today that are relevant in this afternoon? Um, any other ones? Nice. We start in about twenty five minutes. So, but any other relevant earnings? I mean, Roku's starting to turn back here. It's starting to turn back. Uh, I guess I picked the lemon of which stock. Um, and we'll see. Double up the brain power. Hook popped up a bit. Yeah, we can look at Hook. I mean, Roku starting to rebound a little bit. Yeah, Hook is gapping up a little bit right now in pre-market. It'll be a fun day tomorrow. We'll start the stream. And uh, it'll be fun. Walmart reported. Yeah, I saw Walmart report this morning. Uh, and they ran up pretty nicely. So we saw a Walmart report. Again, today we had ANGH short uh, run up. Um, which one was the SPAC? Was it ANGH or ISPO? My end. Yeah, sales is up. APPN is up. Uh, wow. Yeah, you get you get you get men like Solomon who have just never really like a lot of. Uh, I'll be nice. They've never really been around women at all. It's okay. We and, know you're jealous. Yeah, uh, you look petty. jealous and pettiness pops out on the internet. It feels good, man. Um, 
in the end, cheers to you, bro. You're mad, probably sitting at home lonely on your computer. Uh, feels good, man. Feels good. Um, ISPO was the SPAC merger. Hey, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's okay. It doesn't. Someone was trying to call me a granny yesterday. So right now it, you're. It, it doesn't. Now you're. Now I'm an escort. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, hey, Y'all it's the good. internet. Come on. Well, it's the internet. I mean, you got to understand. You got most people are miserable, and and like the only people that truly act like that are miserable people. Like misery loves company. So like the only people being loud like that on the internet are just miserable people. Um. A-N-G-H is not a SPAC. Well, was it ISPO that was the SPAC? So many traders lost money and now they're trading after hours. Yeah, for sure. What's up, ugly? Good afternoon, bro. Uh, yeah, people that hate on the internet, they're just miserable people. Like, I might dislike something, but I never spend the time to actually, like, be mean about it on the internet. Like, if you're doing that with your life, you got to reevaluate what you're doing because is probably not doing well you're probably not doing good if you're acting like that on the internet i'll put it that way um yeah it's all good run still to report sun run company solar play they've been beating down some good entry points out there in the sector uh what is it run we'll see um might be interesting roku's kind of bouncing back we'll see how the earnings call goes i hate a hater hating <laughs> You have to remember there's a lot of sorry humans around. Yeah, for sure. Um, and we don't even need to talk about it. Give them too much attention. Like I said, they're miserable. It, yeah, it doesn't bother me anymore. I mean, the internet's been around for forever. I yeah. still have the trolls. So, I mean, just don't even... Right, exactly, Daniel. It's all good, man. Like I said, the reality of it is I make six figures sitting, about, sitting on the internet talking about the stock market. And so he can try to make me feel bad, but I don't. You know, and I appreciate you guys. You know, we give away free content. We provide a service. It's all good. Um, he's got this bomb hottie of a wife here. Right, dude. I do know? absolutely. You know, with this, and so he can. People can get mad. That's all right. No, it's it's all good. Yeah, and y'all are right. It doesn't even matter. Roku's starting to come back. Yeah, I'm just gonna. You know, yeah. it's all good. Um, we're up there to 135s now. Now, I don't really think it's going to look that good. If we look at the previous closing price, this isn't the actual previous close. The previous close is here. Let's see where this candle opened up. It's at 144.71. And so it is right here. Um, so here is the previous close. So we're going to make this big so we can see this is the level at which it goes from red to green and green to red on the day. So we're going to make this big and pay attention to it because... It's a relevant level for sure. Uh, so if we want to see Roku come back, that's kind of the neutral level is right here. When it hits this level, it's neutral. It's also right around the volume weighted average price. And so those are the important levels to pay attention to, I think, right now. Or at least that one is. We also have this low down here at like 126. Hey, thank you, Dirt. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, Dewey. I appreciate you. Um, from Germany. That's cool. Love this channel. These earnings streams are crazy insightful. Thank you. Pariah, I appreciate you both. Um, yeah, I'm learning. Yeah, I'm she's learning. doing better. You know, she's doing better. She's trying, you know. I think it just maybe takes hearing it. Like a, several, it just takes kind of hearing yeah, that's it what over it is. and over and over again. And then you can kind of. Yeah, that's what it is. You you listen to it enough. You'll, you'll start to kind of have it down. And it's, it's a little bit reassuring to me that even John, like some of these crazy abbreviated or crazy hyphenated words that he still even has to like, just Google it real quick. Cause that's what everyone does. Like right. if you, if there's a word that you don't understand. So well, like, E-B-I-T-D-A, I, I knew what it meant. It just meant gross, but you basically, need, you but I didn't exact, know the exact abbreviation. Yeah. No, it's, it's not something I remembered. Um, I, I knew, I knew what it meant, but I didn't know the abbreviation for it. And that, that type of stuff just takes time. Yeah. Yeah, what's your expectations for DraftKings? Their estimated revenue is two times of their last earnings. When do they drop? Tomorrow morning is when DraftKings comes out, right? I think it's tomorrow morning for DKMG. And we'll be talking about it. So if you want to catch the DraftKings uh, stuff, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. 
Um, we're going to be covering it live tomorrow morning at the opening bell, too. Bro, I hate this window, dude. This window sucks, man. It looks like it's glowing. I know. I, look, I, I said it earlier. I hate this window. It's horrible. It's really yeah, Carol, like number five. the universe five. is trying to tell us something here. I wish my wife traded stocks. I said that a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, that's what every guy wants is their wife to be into their passions too, you know? Carol's kind of into it. I wouldn't say she's like completely into it. Like she's curious, she's curious. Um, Is she gonna sit here with me all day and trade? No, but she's curious enough to sit here with me and learn a little bit. Well, yesterday I was here. Yeah, you did the earnings call. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, NVIDIA was just a big earnings release. We had like a thousand people here, you know, so. <laughs> Windows like Team Edward. Yeah, hey. That's what, no, that's what I said earlier. As I said, I feel like Edward from Twilight. That's why Real I said Diamond that. Hand. Yeah. Diamond Hand. Diamond Face over here. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, SPAC. And that's kind of how you grow a channel. It's like you gain a follow, you gain followers. And then you just kind of wait for big moments that you can cover. And and video earnings were definitely one. Uh, I didn't expect Roku. I even told Carol before this. I was like, I know Roku probably isn't going to be big like NVIDIA because Roku is not as big of a company um, as NVIDIA. You know, Roku, their TVs are dope. We use them. But they're not, they don't have a large enough following. Um, Is it the TV upstairs or Roku TV? Yeah, it is. The TV upstairs is Roku. They, yep. they got those remotes right though it's like this tiny remote that's like yes. this and it's got the volume on but you the side, lose it so though just, but you lose it mm-hmm. though is the problem you know that's yeah, the real problem not with, if you're not if you're got your stuff together bro <laughs> we all lose everything what are you talking about um i disagree she would see all my mistakes yeah yeah t sir um yeah we uh, occasionally you rank on youtube and it's nice Tomorrow, we're going to be covering all these crazy squeezes uh, in the stock market from ANGH and ISPO. Yeah, for sure. Hey, thank you, T-Sir. I appreciate you, man. People search for that content. Yeah, exactly, Detra. Um, so, real quick. Uh, Roku is... So, it's the streaming platform, but they also make TVs? Yes. Yeah, that's correct. So okay. they, it's, it's, a uh, it's, a uh, it's not hardware. I don't think it's software. Um, so it's computer software or it's, it's TV software. Okay. Um, it, what it is, it's like a all in one software that implements all your streaming on your channel, which is streaming basically. If we look at the data here, um, market cap is about 21 billion. So Roku's pretty big, actually. Uh, they're not, they're not small. Um, I'll say that. Uh, but they're uh, uh, just to put you put the difference here, and this is actually very telling. So, market cap of Nvidia is 662 billion. Uh, market cap of Roku, which is again much smaller company, is 21 billion. So, that'll show you the differences between today and yesterday. Yesterday, Nvidia huge earnings release. Um, Roku noticeably smaller, but you know we'll see. Mm-hmm. To put that into perspective, that's about 30 times smaller. I think that's my I think my math is right. It's about 30 times smaller. Um, let's see, 30 times uh, 21 would equal. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so they're about 30 times smaller than uh, than. Nvidia. Roku is about a 30 times smaller company than Nvidia. Roku market cap is 21.69 billion. Uh, Nvidia market cap is like 660 billion. So huge company. See, to me, and that's how you gauge how large or small a company is. Just to put that into perspective, like that's how you yeah. look at how large it is. Market cap equals size of the company. Oh wait, is it out? Hold on, guys. The number one TV streaming platform in America. I'm Maria Menounos. And I'm Andrew. Hopp- is this a commercial or what is this? Roku conference call. <laughs> Every week we bring you our top five titles available for you to. Okay, so this is Roku recommend. Roku recommends. We don't want that. Um. <sighs> we have two Roku t- TVs. Used to be one trillion. Yeah, but I bet. 
I mean, I think a lot of companies lost their value. You can turn a regular TV into streaming, though. They still have value. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Hey, thank you, Spec. Spec said, if any of you lovely pleeps decide to donate $70 plus combined in a single string, Carol feeds John a spoon of mustard, which he despises. Yeah. And I'll do it. And I'll do yeah. it so good. Yeah. I hate mustard. I haven't had to do one in a while. Get um, the biggest spoon I could find. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, so I, I hate got it. some, 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 I got some different kind of mustard. Nah, we're not doing them. Can't do it. But thank you, Spec. I appreciate the five, brother. Now it's just 65 bucks. Um, See, the thing that I would think is, especially as far as far as Roku goes, if it's something that disconnects There's people so from the main cable providers, to me, it seems like because more and more people I know John and I did that a few years ago where we were like Oof. just getting ripped up. Yeah, by dude, they just rip you Comcast off man. or whatever. Yeah, they just rip you off. bro. Yeah. And so we were finally like, OK, well, we'll just do we so we went to streaming you know like netflix it's just cheaper man it's just much cheaper bro like the reason it's cheaper is because okay comcast charges us like 300 dollars a month they might pretend it's going to be cheaper than that and they might say it's cheaper and be like yeah it's going to be 100 bucks a month for some reason their bills just skyrocket like it's like 300 dollars a month every month well, no, you know? and, then, think... and then when you ask them why they'll never explain they'll say oh equipment charges and interest and taxes and so it's never what they claim it's going to be and I, I think that part of it is if they see that they could kind of slowly creep that bill up and that you don't say anything about it, they just keep going up. They just keep doing up. it, man. They just they'll keep, keep doing it, yeah. They'll keep charging. I think one time we got like a 500-something dollar bill yeah. from, you know, and not like we had pushed the bill back and or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, like was, it was just $500. It was yeah. terrible. And we call them and ask them and, and they just have no excuse. They have no reason. The problem is that they offer commissions to uh their workers right like so comcast they they pay their sale their their csr's commission if they can stop somebody from cutting their service and so they just kind of it makes it so that there's a huge conflict of interest to where it's like they will lie and cheat and steal i've seen it myself they do it to me and and it, they lock you into these ridiculous contracts it's just cheaper like comcast you can get comcast and it's fine but you can get hulu tv or you can get uh, a lot of different things uh, hulu tv youtube tv the youtube tv is dope um fubo we have fubo right now we get all the sports we want we get all the sports we want basically uh, everything we had you know like, yeah i like animal planet i like dr pole yeah every now and then right i have family up in michigan and he's always driving around in michigan and it reminds Rod me of my, my uh Purdue. All right, so I'm watching Roku Recommends right now. The, the conference call is supposed to start at 4 p.m. Oh, sorry, that interruption. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't think this is a commercial. Um, or I don't think this is the earnings call. I think this is just a commercial for them. So we're just, we're still waiting. It's going to be in about 10 minutes. Yeah. Webcoin, I threatened to cancel Comcast and Comcast lowers the bill. You have to stay on top of the contract and yeah. like get internet from them. That sounds like, but I don't know. Guess. But it, I don't know. This last time I got Comcast business because their internet, their regional, uh, their residential internet was crappy. So I got Comcast business and they locked me into a contract and I would talk to them and I would be like, Hey, look, I moved, like cancel the contract. And they'd be like, okay, fine. We canceled the contract. And they would be like, okay, I lowered it down to like 70 bucks a month. And then they stayed and they would be like, yeah, it's going to be 70 bucks a month from here on out. And I would have like hour long talks with these people like, yeah, it's 70 bucks a month. So it's going to be 70 bucks a month. That's it. Right. Yeah. 70 bucks a month. Right. And then sure enough, the next bill, 220. And I call them and I'm like, what the heck is going on? Like y'all lied to me. And I was like, and I was like, I, I know y'all record these calls too, because I was a customer service rep a long time ago, like 10 years ago. And, and I know they record their calls. Um, and so, but they just deny it run you in circles it's a freaking mess bro um fubu is pretty good i yeah. mean I, I get all of the stuff that i'd normally like i'm not sure if they have it in canada but... yeah fubo is dope because it has sports like i can watch all sports except for astros games in houston um but i can watch all football all baseball aside from astros games uh all all nba uh and so fubo is dope it, it has all the sports like it's it's i would say it's more of a guy streaming service than a you know it, it can be for anybody but it's definitely more more um sports related you know definitely more sports related yeah yeah they have uh comcast has got a monopoly out out where we are yeah although we are getting more and more um, we're looking at Mate. tagus 
Tachus. Tachus internet fiber optic. I'm going to feel so good. I think they're actually like in setting up. Oh, shit. Oh, damn. Here, it got on my computer, too. Well, I just spilled stevia cola all over me. I don't think it got too deep in there. So luckily, it's good. Hopefully, my computer doesn't start smoking or die now. Whew. All right, so the conference call starts in about eight minutes. Here, put Rosie. Yeah, put her up. Oh, man. Yeah, you hate to see it. Ugh. All right, we're good. Dude, we got to do something. I got to get, like, a blind set for this, because this is just in my eye every day at 5, and I stream a lot at 5, you know? Um, at, like, 5, 5 p.m. Eastern, I stream a lot here, and so it's in my face, like, every day. I'm the chosen trader, you know? All right, guys, we got three minutes. Still waiting on the arm rings call. Uh, I don't know what they're sending me here. Like a love letter to Italy. All right, Roku up there to 133.50s. Let's see if we rebound today. Vote on if you're bullish or bearish here. Good deals online. What other major earnings do we have today, though? Can anyone sign up for the earnings call? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you want the link? You can stream games for free. Hmm. Yeah. Um. It's a sunbeam directly on your face. Yeah, for sure. So we did have the earnings rip. Um, we do have the earnings call starting in about six minutes, guys. Six minutes. Nightbot. Uh, let me see which one's a better one to stream. Maybe we'll stream Nightbot. Or not Nightbot. Uh, not Nightbot. Uh, what, what was the earnings that were dropping today? It was uh, Dropbox. EBX. Did they drop their earnings? It's supposed to be at 5 p.m. Much smaller company, software company. Redfin, Run. Yeah, we're checking these out too. Sun Run, a billion market cap. We've got Redfin. I know Redfin is, earnings call is in progress. It's a tiny company. But we got five minutes, guys, five minutes here. Let me wipe this off. Dropbox. Yeah, Nightbot is just a bot. It's exactly what it sounds like. Hey, y'all hit the subscribe button, though. We stream all the major earnings calls. Uh, what do we have next week in terms of earnings? Let me look this up. Um, is this it for earnings season? Okay, no. So Tuesday and Wednesday, we got earnings. So Tuesday of next week. I think Monday, the market's closed. So Tuesday, we have Sohu. We've got Home Depot. Um, let me document all the. Uh... Depot is HD. Home Depot's got a pretty big market cap. Yeah. Well, no, I see that. So Home Depot's got a almost 400 billion market cap. All right, so Roku. We'll see what the earnings call does for this. We got about six minutes until it starts. Six minutes. We're waiting for it to start now. ENT. My name. 
close for presidents. Home Depot might do well. Yeah, we'll see. So we got Home Depot, um, TransUnion. Which is TRU. TransUnion kind of market cap about 19 billion. So pretty small. Um, Centerpoint, CMP. We know Centerpoint. Yeah. Centerpoint's got about a $19 billion market cap. So pretty small. Um, I mean, irrelevant, but it's still small. Um, Krispy Kreme. Ooh, dude. Krispy Kreme donuts are the greatest. Um, I mean, it's 2.4 billion market cap. Um, I don't see any other major ones. Macy's. I mean, we could always do Macy's. Um, Cracker Barrel. <clears throat> Turning Point Brands. Um, uh, I've never, yeah, it's a tiny uh, company. DraftKings and John Deere tomorrow. Yeah, I know DraftKings is tomorrow morning. Um, so DraftKings will be interesting. We're definitely going to be covering that tomorrow as well. All right, guys, we got two minutes until the earnings call starts. Waiting on hold right now. They've got some commercial playing. Uh, hey, what's up, Damien? Y'all hit the subscribe button, guys. Do it now. You know you want to. Uh, we cover all the major releases. What did Pel uh, Pelantier do today, man? I finally started pronouncing it right. Everybody got super mad at me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was I was pronouncing Pelantier. Let me see. Or I was pronouncing it Palantir. It's Palantir. It got beat up today after bad earnings. Uh... All right, so here, Roku earnings call is supposed to start pretty soon. Yeah, John Deere. I'm just looking for the largest companies, right? So, uh, what's the symbol for John Deere? It's probably JD. Can't find it. Type in just John Deere. Yeah, I can just type in John Deere stock. It is Deer and Company. It's a D E. Yeah. All right, close. so looking so at the J D. Yeah. All right. D -E and that's how you look up a company. Yeah, John Deere's got about 120 billion market cap, so it'll be relevant too. Um, all right, let's check on this earnings call. It should be starting pretty soon. I hope they actually have. I think it's about to be over, guys. Uh, the the ad, at least. No need for the link, but I thought you had to have some extra stuff to be a part of it. Yeah. Um. I mean, not anybody can get it. I appreciate the support. Up twenty four percent, twenty four thousand percent. Yeah. So when's the deer earnings tomorrow morning? Um. Uh, so yeah, it's tomorrow morning. So dear earnings are tomorrow morning. DraftKings is tomorrow morning as well. Tomorrow's Friday. All right, so let's get this thing going here, team. Right, we're going to turn the music down. Y'all can hear the music, right? All right, I don't see anything starting yet. Uh, we're waiting. I don't even think they have hold. All participants are on a listen only mode. After the speaker's presentation, there'll be a question and answer. Okay, here we go. To ask a question at that time, please press star, then one. Let me know how the volume is. Can you hear it? As a reminder, today's conference call is being recorded. I will now turn the conference to your host, Mr. Conrad Grodd, Vice President of Investor Relations. Sir, you may begin. too low i don't think i could turn it Thank up you. anymore good afternoon and welcome to roku fourth quarter and year ended 2021 there we go call i'm joined today by anthony wood roku founder and ceo steve loudon our cfo and scott rosenberg senior vice president general manager of our platform business who will be available for q a all details of our results and additional management commentary are available in our shareholder letter 
which can be found on our investor relations website at roku.com slash investor. Our comments and responses to your questions on this call reflect management's views as of today only, and we disclaim any obligations to update this information. On this call, we'll make forward-looking statements, which are predictions, projections, or other statements about future events, such as statements regarding our financial outlook, future market conditions, and our expectations regarding the continued impact of global supply chain disruptions on our business and industry. These statements are based on our current expectations, forecasts, and assumptions, and involve risks and uncertainties. Please refer to our shareholder letter in our periodic SEC filing for information on factors that could cause our actual results to differ materially from these forward-looking statements. We'll also discuss certain non-GAAP financial measures on today's call. Reconciliations for the most comparable GAAP financial measures are provided in our shareholder letter. Bullish or bearish, Finally, guys. Finally, unless otherwise stated, all comparisons on this call will be against our results for the comparable period of 2020. Now, I'd like to hand the call over to Anthony. Okay, so they're comparing it versus 2020 you, relative Conrad. to 2021. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Roku delivered another record year in 2021. We have an enormous opportunity in front of us that we expect to capture. We have built and continue to expand a set of unique assets for this purpose. These include the Roku operating system, the Roku channel, and our sophisticated streaming ad platform. Our scale has passed 60 million active accounts, and we remain focused on being the best and largest streaming platform. The Roku operating system is poised to gain further market share as TVs shift away from costly proprietary operating systems. We expect manufacturers who want a best-in-class operating system to choose the Roku OS, which is purpose-built for TV. So it's the operating. The Roku system. channel continues to gain momentum. Free ad-supported services are the fastest-growing segment in TV streaming. In just four years, we built a flywheel that propelled the Roku channel to a top five position on our platform in the U.S. This success is a result of combining a robust content portfolio with our ability to send consumers to the Roku channel with superior content marketing and advertising features. Our ad platform is built for TV streaming. We believe large traditional TV advertisers will continue to shift to Roku for the targeting, measurement, optimization, and superior ROI that we provide. And for digital first advertisers and small and medium businesses, Roku makes advertising on TV more accessible. We remain focused on maximizing our competitive differentiators, extending our industry leadership, and driving growth, both in the U.S. and internationally. With that, let me hand the call over to Steve. Thanks, Anthony. Before taking your questions, I'll walk through operational and financial highlights and the dress outlook. In okay. Q4, we grew our active account go. base by over 3.7 million resulting in 8.9 million incremental active accounts for the year, thus ending 2021 with 60.1 million active accounts. While we continue to scale, we believe that the slowdown in the active account growth rate in the second half of the year was in large part attributable to global supply chain disruptions that have impacted the overall US TV market and our TV OEM partners in particular. This was partially offset by Roku player unit sales in 2021 that remained above pre-COVID-19 levels. In addition to increasing our scale, this is how it goes, this goes by. We are also growing engagement on our platform with 2021 streaming hours up 14.4 billion year over year to a record 73.2 billion hours. In Q4, we grew streaming hours 15% year over year while full year grew 25% year over year, as we continue to outperform viewing hour growth of both traditional TV and other TV streaming platforms. Hmm. Average streaming hours per active account per day was relatively flat year over year, as we lapped the pandemic related demand spike. As a reminder, please see our shareholder letter for the full financial details from the quarter and the fiscal year, and I'll highlight a few items. In Q4, total net revenue increased 33% year over year to 865 million. Platform revenue was up 49% year over year 
to a record 704 million driven by strong content distribution and m e growth this was partially offset by temporary softness in advertising spend within the auto and cpg verticals which have been most impacted by product availability issues related to supply chain disruptions q4 player revenue declined nine percent year over year but was up seven percent versus q4 2019 Player unit sales were relatively flat year over year for Q4 and down 4% year over year for 2021. Gross profit, one of our key financial performance metrics, grew 24% year over year in Q4 to a record 380 million. Q4 platform gross margin was 60%, which was down 4.5 points sequentially as the platform business shifted toward a greater mix of video advertising. Player margin was pressured by supply chain challenges as we chose to prioritize account acquisition and insulate consumers from higher costs. We estimate that excluding the year over year impact of component and logistic cost increases on the player business, total gross margin would have been roughly four points higher for Q4 2021. Q4 adjusted EBITDA was 87 million and we ended the quarter with over 2.1 billion of cash, cash equivalents, restricted cash, and short-term investments. Hmm. Looking to the first quarter, we anticipate total net revenue of 720 million, up 25% year over year, gross profit of 360 million with a gross margin of 50%, and adjusted EBITDA of 55 million. I don't know, man. Now, I don't know if I trust Roku on each of these estimates. Q1 total net revenue of 720 million reflects our expectations for standard Q1 seasonality combined with the ongoing impacts of supply chain disruptions on advertising spend within certain verticals. Next, conditions that positively affected gross profit and gross margin in Q1 2021 have shifted. The platform business which had a larger portion of high margin content distribution in Q1 2021 is expected to have a greater portion of video advertising in Q1 2022. Additionally, the player business, which had a strong positive gross margin in Q1 2021, is expected to have a negative gross margin in Q1 2022 as we continue to absorb elevated supply chain related costs. Yeah, possibly, t -Sir. Finally, our outlook for Q1 adjusted EBITDA is 55 million due to higher OPEX, which we expect to increase approximately 55% year over year. As Operating expenses. Aggressively this year. Okay, as so that's going to tank the stock. Adjusted EBITDA in Q1 2021 was 126 million, driven by a combination okay. of very strong platform growth mm. and lower OPEX growth something. as we slowed down investments due to COVID uncertainty. Yeah, everybody's this blaming everything on that. Strong return from prior monetization but, and the inherent but, leverage in our business model. But Roku shouldn't be that much affected Looking by it. the full year, I want to share my thoughts on supply chain, that boost it, our investment that's like, strategy, mm -hmm. and right. our confidence in the business. The only thing First, I can see would be chain. the supply chain. While we have seen some component yeah, that's possible. decrease relative to peak prices in 2021, overall component and logistics costs remain significantly elevated and available issues persist. Thus, we believe these disruptions will continue to negatively affect the size yep. of the TV market and our player margins in the short term. Yeah, this is gonna and drop it, Luke. We assume that ad spend in certain verticals will continue to be impacted by ongoing inventory availability issues until conditions normalize. <laughs> yeah, Chris, for sure. Second, we intend to continue to invest in our growth to date, our investments in people, technology, and content have been successful, as demonstrated by our strong ARPU growth. TVs take Both chips. US yeah. US account base has surpassed the US video subscribers of all of the cable companies combined. Growing our share and extending our lead, both in the US and international markets, is a core part of our plan. So does Roku Before have a TV service? We plan to maintain yeah, a just EBITDA like roughly streaming. in line with 2020 levels on an absolute basis as we continue to invest so against a significant opportunity and drive continued innovation on the platform. Third, 
even with the volatility that is expected to result from ongoing supply chain disruptions, we believe Roku will continue to grow. And our estimate for full year 2022 year over year revenue growth is in the mid 30s. Our core belief is that all of our secular growth drivers that favor streaming remain in place. And we have an exceptional platform as our foundation to build upon. There is a long runway of growth in front of us and we are investing to capture this opportunity. We remain confident in our business and our ability to execute. With that, let's turn it over to discussion. Operator? I don't know. I don't think that sounded very good. Thank you. Um, Again, ladies, the, let me explain my logic. I don't, I don't think it sounded very good because I think that... Again, to ask a question, please press star. I think they one. should do better during COVID because of people being at home. Your line is open. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. The only thing uh, is Steve, just chips. going back to the annual down really 35%. Because at this point, so that reflects like a push. very healthy you acceleration from Q1 remember. levels. Could you talk about what gives you the confidence yeah. in that and perhaps tease out some of the contribution from player and, and platform to get there? And then related, you've called out aggressive investment. Could you talk about some of the top priorities and whether things like uh, controlling more of TV manufacturing play into that? Thank you. Hey, mm -hmm. Justin, this is Anthony. I'll, right, sorry, I'll go ahead, kick off the answer and then turn it over to Steve. Well, no, I was just going to say, at a high level, you know, the streaming platform business you that we're a leader in is a very large global opportunity. Yeah. Your iPhones, uh, well, and we're super well positioned to keep expanding phones. our leadership in it. And so we're going to keep right. investing appropriate, appropriately to the opportunity in our business. If you think about what we've accomplished so far with the money we've invested in our business, we've built some extremely valuable assets. The Roku operating system, which is the industry's only purpose-built operating system for television, and is the number one TVOS in the country, uh, and is making great progress internationally. The Roku TV program itself, you know, where we where we build complete reference designs, license those to manufacturers, and then help help merchandise them at retail. You know, it's been a super successful program for us. The Roku channel, uh, which is a top five channel on our platform, uh, you know, reached households with um, 80 million people in the quarter. And it's just been a big driver of our ad business. And then our ad, and then our very sophisticated ad platform. But, you know, those four assets we've built over the last few years, and we're going to keep investing in them and keep growing them. And together, you know, they were instrumental in driving our gross profit for the year of 1.4 billion, which was up 74%. So, you know, over a tough comp. So, you know, we just feel like there's so much opportunity still in front of us. It's still early days in the streaming platform business, uh, which is a big global business or will be a huge global business. We're gonna keep investing for those reasons. Uh, and then of course there's international, which we're starting to see some good progress on, but it's still very early as well. Um, but Steve, do you want to add any specifics? We have two sure. people that said the same hey, thing. Justin, thanks, thanks for the question. So adding on to what Anthony said, uh, you know, in general, we're providing formal outlook for the near term quarter. So in this case, Q1 and some color on the full year. Uh, you mentioned the, the revenue growth. We said that we thought for the year that uh, revenue would be in the mid thirties on a year over year basis. There's, there's some things that factor into that. Obviously, like Anthony said, we've had successful investments in these, these key strategic investment areas. Historically, we think there's lots more opportunities out there, both to drive scale and monetization. Um, in terms of the Q1 versus full year view, um, on a revenue side on Q1, a couple things to note, and a lot of this has to do with the comp and then the current conditions that we saw coming into the year. And, and there's a couple things. One is I just point back to Q1, and this is similar to Q2 as well. Yeah, this uh, is hurting the stock. That's a good example of where we saw significant strong performance in the platform monetization side with revenue growth rates over 100% year over year in Q1 and Q2 of 2021. At the same time, we were curtailing our investment growth in terms of incremental headcount and other spend because of COVID uncertainty. So that that aspect early in 2021. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I can get it. Leverage in the business. So when you fast forward to 2022 in Q1 in particular, what we see is we see 
more of a mix shifting into the ad business um, because of such a strong comp on the content uh, distribution side and m and &E side. At the same time, you know, kind of mid last year, we, uh, as we got through some of the, the worst uncertainty around the pandemic, uh, we decided that we would continue or we kind of go back to our historical aggressive investment levels. And so you're seeing strong investment in the back half of 2021 and in 2022. As a result, we think that, you know, we pump in Q1 and those will be maybe slightly less tough as the, the, the uh, year goes through it. And the other part we're tracking is in the back half of 2021, we had uh, strong supply chain disruptions that we're still working through, but we're hoping those will mitigate over time. Yeah, DraftKings earnings will be interesting. Thank you. Walmart. Uh, Walmart Thank was today. You. Our next question comes from Laura Martin and Needham. Your line is open. Be interested. To hey know. there. Um, thanks for taking the question. Um, do we have Scott on the line today or no? In general, yeah, I'm here. That's here. Oh, fabulous. Okay, Anthony, one for there. you, one for Scott. Thanks. Yeah, okay. for sure. Broker so, falling data. with this. Anthony, yours is data. So Vizio makes $40 million a year selling some of their data. Your data is better because you have three times as many subs. My question is, hmm. would you ever consider as a new revenue stream selling part of your data, a little bunch of for your proprietary Ooh. use, to others as a new revenue stream? Scott, for you, I'm very interested in hearing from you what you think you're most excited wow. about as the ad revenue driver in 2022. Interesting question. National ad growth, from like new markets like Mexico. Is it the upfront that's coming up in May? Is it the integration of bottom of funnel e-commerce with advertising? I'm really interested in where you see the most growth upside and what you're most excited about for 2022. Thanks, guys. All right. So basically, will Roku sell part of its hey, data for uh, added revenue? Hear from you Interesting again. question uh, here. Sure, that's I'll the take question. This question on data. I think you know generally. We view our data that we generate in lots of different ways, including ACR, automatic content recognition, which I think is the data you're probably referring to. Uh, it's, I mean, that's an existing Visio business. Uh, but we view, we view that data as basically a key part of our ad platform and a key competitive advantage. And so we don't have any plans to sell it. Uh, I mean, we sell ads, we sell lots of ads. And that business is going, you know, is growing incredibly fast, and our data is one of the key drivers. And I don't know uh, Scott, when Scott takes the question, maybe he might have an opinion Roku on data. Roku testing well. lows key to and getting ready yeah, to I'll hit lows. Add, I'll just add to that. Um, if data is a yeah. valuable T asset, and so is is not not something we sell. It's also, in our view, the, the long move from a consumer perspective. And frankly, we think the revenue optimal use of data is to, to keep it and use it for optimizing consumer experience and optimizing advertising. So there are lots of reasons we've chosen to hold that close, consumer oriented and commercial. And I think actually, if you look at some of those other platforms, they're actually regretting their decision and in some cases pulling that data back. Uh, with regards to my excitement about 2022 ad opportunities. There's there are a few things. One is, as you'll recall, we, we bought a division out of Nielsen last year that includes ACR and linear ad replacement technology. Uh, we will be rolling that out to beta in partnership with programmers. I'm very excited about that because it's a, a whole other ad unit to be sold into the marketplace to extend our reach. Uh, I'm also excited about our continued progress in the growth or performance advertising Roku coming category. Down. We really shine when we can leverage our yeah. data and our ad yeah. stack. Yeah, they're about to hit lows. Advertisers drive to real outcomes, uh, product purchases, site visits, et cetera. Um, it, 2022 is a big year for OneView as well. We've made good progress with selling one view into agency holding companies and lots of other advertisers. And I think it'll be a breakout year for us. We just last week announced Nielsen DAR guarantees in one view. This will enable an advertiser to use our data and our ad stack to optimize the age gender goals when buying from programmers in the Roku ecosystem. We have sold that product with our own media for years. We're extending it now in what's an industry first to all uh, all impressions on the Roku platform. Uh, so those are just a few highlights of 
of categories I'm excited about. I mean, the, I guess the punchline is there's just there's just tons of growth opportunity for the ad business. We we might have driven 43% lift in ARPU year over year, but we're nowhere near the ceiling of the ad potential uh, in its contribution to to the Roku uh, platform business. Yeah, this is this is Anthony. I mean, you didn't ask me, Laura, but I'll answer. I'll answer anyway. What what am I most excited about with our ad business? And I think you know, there's. I would highlight two things. One is just the overall industry uh, state, which is that consumers spend 45 percent of their time, their TV time, watching streaming TV. But advertisers. Yeah, I think a lot of people watch streaming TV. Roku broke lows, guys. So Roku just Roku broke lows. And, and like I said, and, I didn't think this earnings call you know, was good for all Roku, TV so advertising. Is going to be not great for. We'll so see what just, happens. There's just still so much opportunity for us there both to capture those existing budgets and to continue to innovate. And then the second thing I would highlight is just the how powerful the Roku channel has become as a source of ad inventory for us and how that's driving just uh, this incredible virtuous cycle around content, advertisers and viewers, and how that's allowing our scale to invest in originals and just becoming just really upping the scale needed to be successful in that business uh, is creating, creating a big opportunity for us as well. Yeah, Thank that makes you. sense. Our next question. All right, so we're going to go ahead and close it down after that one. Um, I, I don't know if we really need to sit through the entire earnings call now, so we're going to go ahead and close it down. Uh, listen, guys, hit the subscribe button. We're going to keep this one a little bit shorter since it's just kind of breaking lows. The earnings call is not really helping it, it seems. And so we're just going to close it down. But, hey, listen, I appreciate you all being here. Hit the subscribe button. Um, we will be covering DraftKings earnings release, John Deere earnings uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, it looks like DraftKings, John Deere, PPL, Arbor, uh, and Ameren earnings are tomorrow. So we're going to be covering those. So be on the lookout for those. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, again, my goal for this channel is just to be a completely free resource and community. So we don't sell anything. We don't sell a course service, claim to be experts. We just want to be a resource and community that doesn't sell courses and try to pretend uh, in the stock market. So if you appreciate that, hit the subscribe button. We drop all completely free news and resources. And yeah, everybody thank Carol. She's slowly learning how to do this. So everybody give her a big thank you. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.